this idea of bringing Silicon Valley to the UK, why do you want to do that? Uh, well, I think that uh, one of the things that's really good about entrepreneurship is that it's a global good, right? And so um, the fact that when you have people who are willing to take a jump, a risk, the metaphor I frequently use for entrepreneurship is you jump off a cliff and you assemble an airplane on the way down, <laughs> right? And that creates actually a universal experience. And, you know, among other things, of course, uh, there's a long and... and um, uh, valued relationship and culturally and economically. And so, you know, I went to school at Oxford here and so forth. And, and the idea is the, uh, entrepreneurship is kind of a global bridge. And I think that we see great, interesting things happening here. And it creates really good bridges, uh, both economically and um, culturally. Two years in, is it? Since Twitter went live, is that right? Well, it's two years. It's two years in as a company. It's about three years in as a as a product. You know, as an experiment. We started earlier, but yeah. we formed the company in two thousand seven. But let me guess, you didn't quite imagine it would take off the way it was going to. Happen. Absolutely not. I mean, we we really started out um, from a point of play, from a point of uh, experimentation to see. Uh, would this little idea um, catch on, at least among our friends, enough so that we could uh, have an excuse to continue working on something that we felt passionate about, something that we enjoyed working on? And we were fortunate in that it, it, it did attract attention eventually, and so we were justified in our efforts. What we originally wanted to achieve is not as easily... Uh, it's, it doesn't boil down so well to a, to a mission statement such that some, a company like Google has. But, but we do, the truth is that um, my co-founder Evan Williams and I have been working for the last 10 years creating large-scale systems that allow people to express themselves and share information easily over the Internet. And so uh, when, when Jack Dorsey, our other co-founder, um, joined us at another company and we started working together on this idea of Twitter, uh, it meshed very well with this overarching idea that the open exchange of information can really have a positive global impact. And, uh, you know, that's what pushes us forward. That's, and, and, and that's, you know, again, it's every day we're reminded that that's true. Anytime something happens in the world where Twitter is involved, we're, we're inspired to continue working on it. What surprised you most, do you think, over the last couple of years? You know, I always go back to this, the, uh, the big surprise being that we, we thought it might be a good idea to open up the technology, the infrastructure, uh, enough so that uh, other geeks, other hackers could maybe do something playful with, with it on top of Twitter. But certainly we didn't expect for this very broad ecosystem to emerge such that there are now tens of thousands of different Twitter applications, whether they're for iPhones, Blackberries, PCs, Macs, different web versions of Twitter other than Twitter.com. And then, in, in addition to that, um, you know, mobile phones, SMS, you know, growing around the world for Twitter. So I think just creating that early openness uh, was a pretty big surprise that it, it, it picked up so fast. Who's paying the bills? Well, are you guys making money? Uh, we, we will be profitable. We, we are going to be, you know, a company that's here for the long haul. And, um, and we're paying our bills uh, right now with some, with some VC. And, and some revenue. And uh, um, we're still at that point, though, where we're, we're focused more on creating value than creating profit. And for us, creating value means uh, you know, creating features for users, growing the network, that sort of thing. VC is not giving you a hard time. Our VC is. I need some return we, on this. We, we were fortunate because we were able to, we built Twitter first and then got traction, which meant that we were in the position, a very fortunate position, to be able to basically hire our VCs, choose the ones that we felt, uh, thought that we, we did, saw Twitter as a long play, and are, are very patient and understand exactly what we want to achieve. So there is no internal pressure from uh, our, our board and our, our venture, capitals, uh, venture capitalists to, uh, to immediately uh, begin turning a profit. That being said, they, they want to see Twitter become a, a profitable business as much as we do. We just want to take the amount of time that it takes to do that. What's, what's your forecast? I mean, how, when, when do you think you'll be able to come to the VCs or the stock market or wherever you end up and say this is the big profit number for I don't this think year? We're, we're, we're ready to forecast that yet. We're, we're, as I said, the company's two years old. What we're, what we're really focused on is, is creating value for users at this point, not, not forecasting revenues uh, uh, or any, anything like that. It's focus on the user first. But is there a sense about fashion here, too? I mean, you know, Second Life, a couple of years ago, was the thing everyone had to have a go at. 
I haven't seen the stats, but it's kind of gone off the conversation point, hasn't it? Well, I think it has to do with whether or not you've created something that is integral to the way people do business and the way people live their lives. And that's something that if you get it right, um, which I think Twitter is on the track to do. People, what, we, what, we, what we're seeing on Twitter now is a lot of adoption by businesses, organizations, schools, and individuals. To, uh, they're making Twitter part of their lives. Uh, people, people are wondering, you know, there's email on my phone, there's IM on my phone, there's SMS on my phone. Where's Twitter? Why isn't there Twitter? They're going to the, to the mobile operators and asking them, where's my Twitter? And so I think we've, we've shown that there is, uh, you know, there's a real need for this service. Even though we didn't know it two years ago, there suddenly is. And actually, I think that the thing that's interesting is there's a lot of fast evolution of technology. And so new things come up and some things drop away. I you know, have no specific comments on anything. But when you're closer to what are the fundamentals of human life, um, connecting with other people you know, um, you know, elaborating your professional identity, your career, solving tasks, answering a question, <laughs> answering a question, those sorts of things. Those have a much longer persistence and are not just a kind of a, a, a temporary fashion. Now I know you both work in the same part of the states, and you're both on this tour around the UK. Um, is there any more to it than that? Are we about to see some kind of tie up between LinkedIn and Twitter? Well, we actually announced uh, a deal a week or two ago. Yeah, it was a couple weeks ago. Yeah, a couple weeks ago, yeah. and the idea was. Um, uh, the, you know, the Twitter sphere has a very broad conversation that ranges all different aspects of life. Some of those are business, like look at this article, or you know, um, you know, here's a trend, and that sort of thing. And what we noticed is uh, on LinkedIn, some things are kind of uh, private, the way email is, small groups and so forth. But some of it is also, I want maximum liquidity. Like I'm asking a question about, you know, hey, has anyone studied this new pattern of, of mobile technology? And is there something that can be done with this? And, and they want to get um, answers from as broad a variety of people as they can get in terms of network intelligence to help them do stuff. And so it's natural. Well, write the question on LinkedIn, but also tweet it yeah. <laughs> right, in order to, 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 uh, to get feedback. And one of the things, part of what gave us from the LinkedIn side this idea was uh, we very early when we launched our platform wrote a company buzz application to give real-time business intelligence kind of studying information that came out of the uh, the Twitter sphere as a way of giving personal business intelligence. We all suffer from, t from uh, follower envy over here because you've had Mr. Fry in the session who just leads the way. How many followers do you have? 8,000 some. I think I'm on the small side of this. And what about I, don't, you? I think that's a pretty good amount actually. Yeah. Um, well, I, mine, mine's all strange because I work at Twitter, so I have too many. Google I have, s I don't, I don't, I'm, it's over a million, but, okay. so it's a lot. <laughs> so you're uh, even bigger than Mr. Fry. Great stuff. Nice to talk to you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.